everybody and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, tell me what you think about the video and definitely share it. It's important. Share this video. I got a special one today. I think people are going to be, you know, very interested in this dude's story. Dude did a lot of time in, in prison, federal prison, state prison, but I'm going to let him introduce himself. Tell the people who you are, man. Tell them where you're from and tell them how much time you did. All right, Chad. Uh, first of all, I appreciate what you're doing, getting the word out. Um, I did 15 years in 11 United States penitentiaries. Started a marijuana conspiracy, started to get weed in Mexico in the mid-90s. Um, I just transported a couple loads. Just uh, wanted to make a quick buck. And then the, the feds came and knocking. And then, uh, you know, they, they, they wanted me to... Uh, snitch on some Mexicans and stuff and I, I held my mud so they uh they sent me to Leavenworth where uh it was my first prison first time I did any time and uh, I had to learn pretty quick down there yeah that uh that's where I made my bones in, in Leavenworth so listen your name's Trevor right what did they call you in uh what did they call you in federal prison they called me big money Trev when I ran the ticket when I, when I first got to Leavenworth, I was, uh, I was a young kid, and uh, they called me young and handsome for a while. Well, I wasn't young and handsome anymore. <laughs> you said you've been in 11 federal prisons, man. Tell me why you were shipped all the time, man, why you went to different prisons. Well, in the, in the feds, you get a bunch of disciplinaries. They'll transfer you. Um, I guess they think that's uh, that'll get rid of the problems. They just keep transferring you. Everybody just keeps going in a circle. They transfer you all over the place. But if, if you get a certain amount of write-ups, they'll transfer you. You know, everybody's hustling and stuff, and there's there's no good time. There's no parole, so you're not really worried about any write-ups. So, like, you're – I mean, you're making knives. You get caught with a knife. Uh, you're running tickets. You're making moonshine. You're making wine. You, you're – doing dope you're getting dirties just whatever fights this politics you know the, if a rat hits the yard you gotta smash them and so you just you get about three write-ups three major write-ups and they'll they'll want to get you out of there or it depends what you do if you stab somebody they, they, they'll get you out of there so i just uh oh just one of them bought it bought it white dudes right and i just want to get me in the cool car and uh that's just how i did my time let me ask you this, Trevor. So, you know, you were in federal prison, man. You were kind of involved in all the, I guess you could say all the dirty aspects of being in prison. You go in, you're young, kind of a big dude, and you didn't have a problem putting in work, right? Not at all. That's usually how it goes in a pen, right? Like, it's, you go by cars, like, where you're from and stuff. Like, if you're not in a gang, it's usually, you usually ride with where you're from. It's like, I mean, it's it's mostly all, all gang members, man. There's like a ton of, ton of gangs in there. But like, you're going to still keep your car clean. Like if you're, I'm from Minnesota, so anybody that from Minnesota rolls up, I got to make sure the paperwork's good. And they might be able to hide it for a while and like have some uh, bogus paperwork, but it all comes out in the end. And then, and then you're going to want to get them. Everybody, everybody like after rats, right? Cause, They've all been ratted on them, so they don't even care who they get get backs on. They don't even have to get get backs on the people that ratted on them. They just anybody. So if a rat hits the yard, you got five, ten white dudes raising their hand. I want to get them. I want to get them. I want to get them. Putting in work is the thing to do, I guess. You know. Let me ask you this, right? So putting in work. I mean, you did you put in work while you were in there, right? Absolutely, I put in mad work, everything, even when I didn't go looking for it. This is what I want to know. When you say putting in work, what were some of the things that you had to do in federal prison, man? Keep it real with the people. Uh, what I had to do. Oh, well, I mean, I, I guess, I guess the worst thing I did, I got, I got put in a bad spot where uh, this, uh, this some dirty South dude um, told me not to go back to the unit, and I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And I went, I went back to the unit, told the white dude, "Hey, man, this dude's." just check me or whatever. And I, uh, I'm on the top tier. He's on the bottom tier and he goes like this, shows me his knife. So I didn't, I didn't have no choice. I, I had, I had a knife. I got it over the, um, the oven. 
the, the, the racks you put in the oven, it was a good one. It was about the size of my pinky. And, uh, man, I've just, I didn't know what to do. I never stabbed no one before. I was just jammed up. I just, you know, it's fucked up. Federal prison's fucked up. So I ran down the stairs and I just, I started hitting him. I hit him like five times. He ran, luckily. He didn't want to go toe to toe. And uh, that was probably like the worst day of my uh, federal career. And I didn't have a green light. That was a no, no hands yard. That means you can't, you can't put your hands on no one else. It's got to get politic out. I just didn't have time for that shit. And uh, so to save my career, I had to fight my own. So I went in the cell with like 10 of my own and, and, and got my ass kicked. But I had to do it to save my career. So it was all around a bad day. But um, what other work? I don't know. Just mostly just crashing dudes, crashing uh, rats and shit and choles. We don't get too many choles, really. They're not allowed. You get like, I think my whole 15 years there was two child monsters ever to walk the yard and it was ugly what they did to them tell tell the people what they did to them. i'm interested I, I mean i wasn't with you i was never in prison with you but i'm like okay so so i was in lompoc and, and and one one case this guy had a big child porn case they sent him to lompoc and they're like there's no way we're putting you out on this yard he's like yeah i'm going on the yard and they're like no you're not going on the yard this is the staff you know he's like his lawyer got him out so he's white so we had you know, the white dudes had to handle him. So, so some dude wanted to get his packs, right? Which is, uh, he wanted to be in a gang. So he had to stab him to, uh, to go in a gang. But uh, he didn't do a very good job. But the dude that passed him up grabbed the knife and, like, stabbed him, like, 18 times. And he fell by the door where you walk in. And every white dude that walked out the yard booted him in the head. And that was, uh, yeah, that was that. So, and the other one gazelled it off the yard before... Before we, uh, he was on Oprah. I was like, I married a child monster, so I'm on Oprah Winfrey. And you're like, that's the dude right there. And he goes running and, and he got away and he, he PC'd up. So, what prison was that at where, where you know, this happened where you, the dude was jumping? That was USP Lompoc. That was uh, 2000, 2003 in USP Lompoc. That happened. What other, what other reasons were you transferred for? Do people want to know this stuff? They're interested in what's really going on. So, you've been transferred for violence. What other reasons were you transferred for? I mean, carrying a knife, things like that? Yeah, knives, um, just politics on the yard. Like, I started getting, like, uh, I don't know, a name for myself. So, like, if I, if they think you're running running the yard and they want to change the yard and uh, we don't want them to change the yard, then, you know, we might have to buck or something. And, uh, like, a leader organizer kind of thing, they would transfer me and... Um, they had this pilot program where you had to do a year, year cleaning the hole. They started that shit, and so I'd have to sit, I'd, I'd have to sit a year, year at a time before I got a transfer. So that fucked me up. So we were bucking that, and we take on the cert team and all that shit in the hole. So it was, I mean, it was a lot of rough years, man. Let me ask you about this. First, I want to go back to the Dirty South dude because you said there was a no hands policy, and what that means is. That a white dude can't put his hands on a black dude. Black dude can't put his hands on a white dude. Mexican can't put his hands on a black dude. You know, it just saves, you know, from anything really happening. But in your situation, dude half-ass threatened you. You went back, you told the white dudes, and then you went and stabbed them. They tell you that you couldn't stab them? No. No, they didn't. They didn't say shit. It was, I mean, that was too late for all that anyway. They just, uh, they couldn't get to the dudes that, uh, that ran the yard. It was, uh, uh, that was the AB yard, and they were on the other side of the yard. There was no time for none of that. So, for me. let me ask you this: When you stabbed the dude, he just took off. He started running. He didn't want. He he had, he was like, "I'm good." Yep. Yeah, he took off. He, he went like this because I, I was hitting him right here. And then and then it was like all the black dudes lined up, all the white dudes lined up, and it's like you know, I mean. Basically, just to stop the riot, you know, I it's called taking a hot one. I took a hot one, which I had to, uh, I had to fight my own shit. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was that was that was a bad day for me. Oh yeah, I want to ask you about that. So the white dudes are going to discipline you to stop any type of race riot. So they take you in a cell. Right. I mean, right. I mean, how bad they beat you up? Oh, oh, pretty good. Yeah, I got I got I got smashed pretty good. I guess. I was mad about it, you know, because they were my dudes, right? I thought it was a little, little, little too bad, right? 
But uh, I don't know. I got one like in the next yard. I got so I got sent to Lee County, Virginia, and I was like, after the dudes crashed me in in the sound, I, I was mad. I told him straight out, like, oh, you guys are on site. And uh, I seen one dude. He rolled up, and he's like, hey, Trevor, what's up? And I was like, you were in two B, right? And he said, yes. Yeah. So he said I, I crashed him right there on the yard, and uh. A quest to say, a quest to say, that means everybody down in, in, in the towers are shooting and shit. And uh, they put all the white dudes in, in, the, uh, in the hole in the wreck cages because there were so many of us out in the yard. And the captain comes and I was like, you can let all these dudes out. And he's like, why? And I'm like, so he says, all right, keep the open and let everyone out. I got a couple of get backs, but uh, yeah, that's, that, that's life in federal prison homes. That's, that's daily shit. That's all it is. It's violence every day, dude. It sucks. Did you go back on the yard at USP Lee, or they transferred you? No, I went back. I went. I went. I went back on the yard. Oh, they so they let the other dude out, but then I had some. I had some comrades on uh, on the yard, and they chased him off. He ran off the yard and shit, and they let me out. But uh, I don't know. I fucked it up a couple months later, or whatever. They they put me on like a two hour watch card, and uh, I don't know. I fucked it up or something, and they they transferred me to uh. Where did I go? I went to Allenwood, Pennsylvania in 2008. I know you say federal prison sucks, man, because of all the violence, the things that you've seen. You ever, see, you ever see anybody get killed in there? No. I didn't see anybody get killed. I, just, I mean, I've seen a lot that were pretty close. I've seen a dude get airlifted. Um, so in Leavenworth, this was the Hawaiians. It had nothing to do with me. It was the, they call it the Islander car. And this dude, he's like, he got accused of stealing a radio or something, and he's like, he told the two shot callers, they got the straight killers, got bodies and shit. He's like, go get your shit, punk. So I was like, oh my god. So this dude Larry, he went, his name was Hawaiian Larry, and he, he went and got a, a National Geographic, and so he taped them onto his body, right? And he put some locks on a belt, and he went down there, and he was. Uh, He's swinging away at him. He's, he's fighting too, but they they had they had nice. The uh, Eli had the uh, lawnmower blade or the lawnmower, and he was just stabbing him, and you could just hear it. And they all got tired, right? Larry, he didn't run. He sat he, he sat there at bottom, right? He was putting in work with the locks, but they got tired. And then Dan looked at Eli, and he's like, "We gotta kill him." And Larry goes running, and there's just this one female cop. She's working. And, Larry goes running up to her. She she goes, ah, she locks herself in the bathroom. So Larry's got to take the phone and he's fighting him off with the phone and shit, waiting for him to come with the guns and shit. And uh, he uh, he got airlifted out of there, but he lived. He lived. But I just, all the gang fights and shit, I seen the uh, G27s and the Latin Kings go at it. And they would fight. They fought for a fucking hour. They, they were taking broomsticks and slicing slicing each other up one one line king you could put his tongue through his fucking cheek through his whole cheek and that shit's uh i mean that's all day home head on a swivel you know you still didn't boot it when the doors pop shit you don't know it's gonna pop off dude you know definitely a dangerous place man you've seen some dangerous things i want to know this do you think it affected you mentally and emotionally because i see you got that tattoo on your arm says hate do you think the things that you've seen in prison man affected how you live, man, and, and, and just your everyday life? Well, absolutely. I'm just uh, I'm just a Stillwater kid, man. It's, it's uh, I got to Leavenworth, and, uh, dude, it was culture shock. I walked into the char hall that first morning, and it's like, I didn't have one tattoo. I didn't have one single tattoo. And when I walked into char hall in Leavenworth, it's just people from the top of their heads, and it's everybody's tanned back. So I, I felt naked. You know what I'm saying? I felt completely naked. I didn't have no tattoos. And then you just get in, you just get in where you fit in and you just get drunk and dudes like, oh, I want to put a tattoo on you. And and that's how all my tattoos came about. It's just, uh, I got them all free from my homeboys. We just got drunk and uh, got tattooed on, you know, all free and drunk. I want to ask you this, right? I see a bunch of tattoos. Were you ever tipped up? No, I was never tipped off. I mean, they all tried to tip me up and shit, but I just, uh, I don't know. I just figured I went in nothing. I, I, I'd come out nothing, but, uh, you know, I, I rolled with them, you know. I'd ride with, uh, it's just, 
it's basically federal prison segregated. You know, you got the blacks, Mexicans, whites, and they're all like, you you live with each other. Uh, or like, it's all segregated. The chow hall out on the yard, the tables out on the yard, and shit, how you do business and shit. You really got to like, the Serenos don't do no business with the blacks. So you got to like, I ran poker tables, right? I was just trying to make money. So I'd have to have a different table where like the blacks couldn't play because the Serenos were there. And uh, shit like that. It's just, it's, it's, that's just the way it is. It's just, it's, everything's just segregated. Definitely a different place, man. Not a place that people want to spend their life, right? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, I mean, you got the camaraderie, you know what I'm saying? You, you, it's your homies, you know what I'm saying? And you look at them for your, you know, protection and everyday life. You know what I'm saying? So you got that. You got the partying and shit. But, I mean, I've heard people say, oh, I want to go to the feds. I want to go to the feds. And I was like, oh, my God, you guys are crazy. Maybe in a low or an S guy. I mean, we call them. I mean, them dudes are our fuck boys. That's, that's fucking lame, Bill, right? You come to a pen and it's not, oh, hey, I want to go to the feds. It's fucked up. You're suited and booted when the doors pop. You know what I'm saying? They pop at 6 a.m. You got to have, you got to be ready to go. And you don't know what's going on. And that's, that's just no way to live. You see that violence every day. There's just like everybody takes takes care of their own cars. And you'll be just walking and right in front of you, dude, will be getting stabbed and, and fucking jumped and, and all that. It's, it's uh, no, I got, I don't know. I see a lot of violence. So, I mean, it, it, it's affected me, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to move forward, you know. What was... What was one of the worst things you ever seen in the feds? Not that you did, but what was one of the worst things you ever seen? Was it that thing with the Islanders? Yeah, oh, yeah, that. And then uh, a dude named Slayer from Stockton, he came up. He started a riot on uh, 420, which uh, hit his bir birthday in uh, in Florence. Big riot, whites and blacks. The tower, one black guy and one white dude, they, they dumped all the fucking bullets. Couldn't even shoot no more. And, uh, so they got cased. All the white dudes that didn't fight, they put all the white dudes in the gym, and the white dudes that didn't fight, they got crashed. And, and so the white dudes that crashed them, they got cases. And so when they went to court, they come out, this dude had a fucking sex case. And, uh, you know, he was my friend. I was with him in USB Atwater. So when the paperwork came out, I was in McCreary, and it was like, we, we got to get this dude. And I was like, oh, that's fucking Slayer. It's my dude. And I was like, I, I can't do it. But, uh, Whatever I watched it and it was uh it was Big Jerry, which is one of the biggest white dudes you'll ever see. And uh he just walked up and he, he and he broke his face, dude. He broke his whole face and stopped him. And then uh when he when he fell out, another dude started stabbing him and shit. That was pretty bad. And Jerry just kept hitting him. I'm like, Jerry, get somewhere, because the deuces came, they were all running and shit. But uh, yeah, that was pretty he didn't even know what happened to him. He thought he thought the blacks did or whatever. He, Cause uh, he got wired shut. And he's like, they broke my jaw. So that was that was that was pretty bad. The whole yard stopped when Jerry hit him and his face shattered. The whole yard just stopped and looked and was like, holy fuck! That was that was that was that was pretty gruesome. Hey, I want to ask you about that. I didn't know you were in Florence for that race riot. No, 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 I, oh, no. I wasn't in it for that. No, he was the dude Slayer was. He started it. And then they got him in McCrary. Was he from Florida? No, he was from Stockton, California. I want to talk to you about this. You're out of prison now. You you, you got a job, a good job, right? Yeah, I'm working. Yeah. Got a nice girlfriend, right? Yeah, I'm on the grind. On the grind. Are you living a happy life now, man? Uh, I mean, I mean, I am now. I mean, it's weird. I, I kind of, it's hard to say. Like, I forgot about all that. But I remember at the same time, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, I guess I'm just, I don't know. I guess it's just my brain trying to get me to forget about that shit because it was such such a disaster. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I might have a little bit of disconnect there, but I just I just take it one day at a time and move forward. But yeah, you know, it's it's definitely destroyed my life, man. It's, it's uh, I'm trying to learn, uh, I guess, forgiveness because, Cause I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of hate in my heart, man, from, from federal prison, you know, 
just for, on the dudes that told on me and shit. Do you think that the hate, man, in your heart affects your daily living? Does it affect how you, you know, deal with other people in normal day society? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm getting better, though. I mean, like, when I got out, when I got out, it was like any, any, like, okay, so I went to the club when I got out, and there's a lot of people, and I was like, oh, my God, a lot of people. That, if there's a lot of, if you're bunched up like that, where I came from, the, the pens, it's going to be a riot. It's a riot. So it's like. I was like, oh, I don't like this. But just for a little while. And then I wouldn't look in, in people's eyes. I was like, I would look at their hands, you know. Um, I, was, you know, I was just programmed to, to see if they had any weapons or anything, right? And and you don't want to you don't want to look people in the eye in a penitentiary because then you're like, what, you, what do you mean mugging me for? You just you just don't do it, you know, you don't see, you don't so it took me a little bit of time, you know. I look people in the eye, like, oh, people are good. You know, so it, it just took me a little bit, but I still got some of that politic in me where, you know, I just, it, it affects my daily life sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't do that. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like if somebody, if somebody says punk or bitch, oh, it's on, it's, it's a fight. And then when I don't see a fight, I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it's just shit like that, you know, because that's like. You're not hearing punk and bitch in a, in a penitentiary without uh, there's it's it's on as soon, as soon as you say that no matter what it's on and if you don't do nothing then your dudes are gonna get you are you glad you're free man oh man i never i i mean i got 146 months is what i got when i got to leavenworth i had 146 months and they were calling me short timer and i'm like what I never thought I was going to make it out know, 12 years. I was like, oh, my God, you know, because the average sentence was 30 years in Leavenworth. Everyone's just doing nothing but time. So it just I just never thought I'd, I'd get out. And then like you hit the halfway point and then you keep going and, and, and just do. But my release, my release was one of the worst releases ever. I'm I'm in the hole in McCreary. And. Uh, I'm getting ready to go to this halfway house and they put me outside in the wreck cage, getting ready to go. All of a sudden the deuces go off. And uh, so I'm sitting there waiting. It's been a while. It's, uh, some DC dude stabbed the cop. So when the cops came back to the, uh, to the hole, they're like, I'm like, what do you mean? No. They're like, dude, we don't, we don't think you're getting out. So I went from the highest to the high to the lowest to the low in like that. And I was, I just got sick. I don't know. I asked the cop for a cigarette. I don't even smoke, but he's like, "Oh, don't come at me like that." And he's like, "I'll give you a phone call." And then I forgot. I had I had my old lady picking me up at the Greyhound bus stop, and uh, I called her. I said, "I ain't getting out." She's like, "Yeah, hey, you're getting out right now." And then the lady comes running in. It's like, "You gotta go." They found someone that could release me or whatever. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty ugly. It actually happened to me twice. I got I got a dirty in a halfway house. And so I went back, they, they brought me to uh they brought me to Terra Hunt. Uh I was keistered up too. I made bank. Uh I knew I knew I was I knew I was going, so I keistered up. Anyway, uh on that release, so I, I fucked up my halfway house time, but on that release, I'm ready to go. I'm standing at the door, and the cop gets in a fight with the inmate, and they're just fucking going at it right in the office. I'm like, no, not again. But I made it out then too. So yeah, I've had some fucked up releases for sure listen as crazy as this might sound man i was in the same boat they walk me to the gate my family's there i see him in the parking lot and they call the cop on the walkie talkie and they tell him hey don't release him there's an immediate appeal and i was at the high of the highs i said man after 17 years i'm finally gonna walk out of prison man and then they stopped me man and i ended up sitting in there for another two three weeks till the appeal was taken care of interlocutory appeal and they released me but man that is a sick feeling to have trevor you know been there yeah i've been there Ooh. i want to ask you this right because you are out here living a law-abiding life man i can tell a little bit man that prison affected you and you know you can see it in the video you can see it when i talk to you you're high strung you're hyper but you're free man and i'm sure you got a message man for kids man young kids that are on the wrong path what would you tell them from your experiences in life what would you tell them man i would tell them 
all money is not good money, man. That's just, I just wanted the money. I never thought it was going to end. And just, it was fun buying the gold chains and the clothes and all that shit. All that shit. When the feds come knocking, they're taking everything. They're sending you to some badass places and it's not going to be fun. And you're going to get put in positions that you do not want to be in uh, on the regular. You're going to have to put in work or you're, you're going to get cracked. You go, prison breeds racism. So whatever color you are, you're going to fucking get in with them. And you're going to learn a lot of fucking hatred. It sucks. That's the way it is. And uh, there's freedom is, it's priceless. Once you once you lose your freedom, it's just, it's, there's nothing more important. I could care less about paper, dude. I could care less about it. Freedom is everything, everything. That's what's up, man. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the show, man. But tell you, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate that message, man. Because there's nothing in the world worth you know worse than losing your freedom, Trevor, man. And I appreciate you. Thing. Appreciate you coming on the show, man. I'm gonna end the show with that. We'll talk again. You know, blood on the razor wire TV. Until tomorrow, we're out.